Human beings are capable of horrifying, spine-chilling deeds. We've all heard of the worst evils inflicted upon innocents, and every year a new case stuns us into silence, making us wonder if there's a line humans won't cross. In this series, we're going to look at disturbing real-life crimes. This is Cold-Blooded Crimes. Shirley Elizabeth Good was born in 1941 in St. Louis, Missouri. She had a fairly quiet upbringing and not much is known about her early life. It wasn't until later in her life that she became known for her string of failed marriages and eventually she became a murderer. Shirley met Joe Sinclair, and in October 1968, at the age of 27, she got married to him. It was Shirley's first marriage, but it definitely wouldn't be her last. The couple lived well and seemed happy, but Joe didn't feel safe with Shirley. Nine months after their marriage in July 1969, Joe claimed Shirley was trying to poison him. On several occasions, his coffee tasted strange, but his wife would brush it off with excuses. He took the matter to authorities. Even though it was found he suffered from internal damages, he didn't press charges against her. However, Joe now feared for his life and immediately filed for divorce. He wanted nothing to do with Shirley after that and would not speak about their marriage and its abrupt ending. After the end of her first marriage, Shirley didn't give up on her romantic life. In seven years, she was married three more times. However, none of the marriages lasted and the men divorced her each time. The reason behind these divorces is unknown. During this time, Shirley had two daughters, Norma and Paula Hawkins. Shirley wasn't done though. In 1977, she got married to her fifth husband, John Gregg. Just like all her marriages, this one didn't last too, but it wasn't because she got divorced. In 1978, less than a year after their wedlock, John suddenly collapsed in their home and died. Over the last few months, his health was seen to rapidly decline, so his death was ruled as a natural one. Shirley was now a widow. She was devastated by the loss of her husband, but it wasn't for the reason everyone expected. At the last minute before his death, John changed the beneficiary for his life insurance policy. Shirley was left with nothing. This made her furious as she was unaware of the changes her late husband had made. Even though her anger was evident to those close to her, no one connected it with her husband's death. She continued living life, not letting her new status as a widow stop her from finding another husband. Lloyd Ray Allen, a former Air Force man, was born on August 23, 1942, in Campbell, Missouri. In September 1981, he married Shirley. Lloyd was known for being a good father figure to Shirley's daughters, taking care of them and his new wife. Unfortunately, a few months into their marriage, Lloyd began to struggle with his health. He complained his drinks tasted funny, but his wife reassured him it was just the iron supplements she put in to help him with his health. He believed and trusted her, continuing to take the drinks she gave him. On November 1st, 1982, Lloyd suddenly collapsed and died in his home in St. Peter's, Missouri. Despite his illness, the circumstances of his death were strange and triggered a lot of questions. When the authorities arrived, they found Lloyd on the floor, a pool of blood around him. This meant that he died some hours before they were called. Shirley arranged for a quick funeral, but this only made the police and people around grow suspicious of her, and it wasn't long before they found out about her past. This was her sixth marriage, four had failed, and two left her widowed. Something strange was going on. On top of that, they found the police report from her first marriage accusing her of poisoning Joe Sinclair and the sudden death of John Gregg only a few years ago. The evidence pointing to foul play was growing and it was decided Lloyd's body would be exhumed for further investigation. An autopsy conducted showed high levels of ethylene glycol in Lloyd's body. Ethylene glycol is a sweet tasting, odorless substance, also known as antifreeze, which is highly poisonous. Lloyd's seemingly natural death was a murder and all evidence pointed to his wife as the killer. Shirley was arrested five days later, on November 6th, for the murder of her husband, Lloyd. Shirley was put on trial two years later in Rolla, Missouri. In 1984, Shirley was convicted of capital murder. Her teenage daughters came forward, willing to testify against her. 
However, their testimony came with a condition. They would only do it if their mother will be exempt from the death sentence. A deal was struck and they went on the stand. At first, Norma was reluctant to talk, saying it was Paula who witnessed everything. But it was soon discovered that Shirley threatened her daughter when she went to visit her in jail. Norma was scared of her mother and didn't want to be involved. However, after some convincing, she came forth and joined her sister on the stand. The girls saw their mother regularly putting antifreeze in Lloyd's beers and beverages. She started doing it around March 1982 and went on till he died. And right before the murder happened, Shirley sent her daughters to buy more antifreeze for her, saying they can now finish him off. The girls didn't know what to do, as they didn't want their mother to get in trouble. But losing Lloyd also hurt them, as he treated them with love and care. Further evidence was presented when an insurance agent testified. He said Shirley came to him asking about Lloyd's insurance policy, which was $25,000. And the day after Lloyd was found dead, she went straight to their offices to inquire whether she needed to sign any papers on the policy. This was not the behavior of a grieving widow, but rather that of a woman trying to cash out on her husband's death. The authorities now had a motive for the murder. After a four-day trial, it took the jury less than three hours and only three votes to convict Shirley of first-degree murder. On July 6, 1984, she was sentenced to life in prison without eligibility for probation or parole for 50 years. Her children's plea deal helped her escape the death penalty. Shirley died 14 years later on April 2, 1998. She was 57 years old and suffered from heart conditions. Throughout her marriages, it was clear Shirley's driving force was money. She didn't care for love, as some may have thought. She only saw the many husbands she married as a gateway to receiving a payout on their life insurance. Her method was deadly, poisoning them and slowly watching them die. It's not clear where she picked up this choice of murder or how her upbringing influenced her. Do you think something twisted happened to Shirley when she was younger? Or was she just a cold woman chasing after money and willing to kill for it? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more cold-blooded crimes.